Somebody shout hallelujah. Beloved, the Bible says in Ezekiel 37 verse 7, it says, And I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a great noise, and indeed a great shaking. And each bone came together, bone to bone. I prophesy into your life this year that every dry bone situation will hear the voice of the Lord, gather themselves together and come alive in the name of Jesus. Ezekiel connected them, dry bones, Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones, Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones, now hear the word of the Lord. Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones, Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones, Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones, now hear the word of the Lord. Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones, Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones, Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones now hear the word of the Lord. Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones, Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones, Ezekiel connected them. Dry bones now hear the word of the Lord. Let the football connected to the foot bone, the foot bone connected to the heel bone, your heel bone connected to the ankle bone, the ankle bone connected to the leg bone, your leg bone connected to you. Your bone, your knee bone connected to you. Thigh bone, your thigh bone connected to you. Hip bone, your hip bone connected to you. Back bone, your back bone connected to you. Shoulder bone, your shoulder bone connected to you. Neck bone, your neck bone connected to you. Head bone, now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Them bones, them bones gonna walk around. Now hear the word of the Lord. Disconnect them bones, them dry bones. Disconnect them bones, them. Dry bones disconnect them bones them. Dry bones now hear the word of the Lord. Disconnect them bones them. Dry bones disconnect them bones them. Dry bones disconnect them bones them. Dry bones now hear the word of the Lord. Then your head bone connect upon your neck bone. Your neck bone connect upon your shoulder bone. Your shoulder bone connect upon your back bone. Your back bone connect upon your hip bone. Your hip bone connect upon your now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, them bones, them bones, them. Dry bones, now hear the word of the Lord. Shout it loud, hallelujah. Amen. Raise up your right hand to the heavens as you declare this prophetically loud and clear. I prophesy. Is that the largest voice you can gather here this morning? Into the womb of this year. Save my life. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and prophesy. Makapata sanda kaya bushan. Speak by the spirit of prophecy. In Jesus' name we pray. Ezekiel made an interesting personal prophecy. 
He said, this city shall not be my cauldron. Neither shall I be the flesh within it. I prophesy unto this year. You shall not be my cauldron. In the name of Jesus, prophesy that the year shall not be your cauldron. Masikaya bo shendera bo kontara bo sanda. The year shall not be my cauldron. In Jesus' name we pray. This year, I must sit on my throne of celebration. I want to appeal to you that this powerful words of prophecy don't joke with them. This year, I must sit on my throne of celebration. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and prophesy upon your life. Masikaya bo shende raba kanda raba. Ribo seponde kaya bo shanda. In Jesus name we pray. And somebody needs to shout this prayer with boiling anger. The one I'm going to say now. And if we shout it the way I want you to shout it. Within the next 24 hours. You shall have a mighty testimony. So this year, nobody shall say unto me, better luck next time. Can you say it in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus, then we pray. Say so this year, I silence every Goliath posting against me. In the name of Jesus, silence the Goliath posting against you. Aha. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Declare this louder than anyone around you. This year, every power. Standing between me and my miracles, shall die in the name of Jesus. Kill the power in the name of Jesus. Bakata ribo soponde kaya bo shanda, daribo soponda kaya bo In Jesus' name we pray. So this year, every evil imagination fashioned against me shall backfire in the name of Jesus. This year, every evil imagination fashioned against me shall backfire. It shall backfire. In Jesus' name we pray. Now with a voice that is loud this year, say, This year, I shall sing my song and dance my dance. 
in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it loud and clear. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. I will praise the only name to, for bringing us to this first Sunday service of the year. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, lay your hands upon our lives. Open our understanding mightily. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In louder, Amen. In louder, Amen. Before you sit down, I'd like you to say Happy New Year to at least seven persons. Give them Happy New Year in Jesus' name. Shout it loud, Hallelujah. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Amen. This morning I want to share with you about a particular group I do not want you to belong to this year. Because if you belong to those kind of group, you will turn your back on your blessings. Let's look at Second Timothy chapter 2 from verse 23. Second Timothy chapter 2 from verse 23. Second Timothy 2 from verse 23. I'd like you to listen to me with the external air, inner air, and your spirit man. Plenty of people come to church on Sunday and they don't gain anything. Don't start the year like that. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 23. So, but foolish and unladened questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strives. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, up to teach patience. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, for adventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Who are these people who are taken captive by the devil at his will? You see the answer in verse 25. Instructing those that oppose themselves. So this morning, the message is titled, Those that oppose themselves. Those that oppose themselves. That is the group I do not want you to belong to this year at all. The group of those that oppose themselves. Verse 25 again. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God for adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. What a strange scripture. It is possible, beloved, to buy a poison and relabel it as soft drink. It is possible, beloved, for somebody to pick up a serpent from the bush and program it into your own life. It is possible to dig your own grave and begin to hide this pain from, from those who want to save you. It is possible for somebody like Jonah to buy the ticket to where we destroy him. It's possible for you to set a battle in array against yourself personally. You are the one waging war against yourself. It is possible for you to vote your own destiny out of power. It is sad, but it is happening. It's unfortunate, but it is true. People sit down, they manufacture weapons, they train soldiers to fight themselves. And it's a strange thing. Those that oppose themselves. Because I've had me sharing this about some time ago here. I was sitting in my counseling room here. That time the counseling room was somewhere in this corner, a very small place. And two people came to see me, two students. And they introduced themselves. And they were very honest. And I want to say, well, that is the president of a cult society. And said, so this one is our secretary general. I said, welcome. 
So, what do you want from me? It's actually, we need financial assistance. I see. Are you aware that this is mountain of fire? Say yes. But well, we know you like young people. That's why we came. I said, okay. We don't have that kind of money here to do what you do. So okay, sir. So if you want, don't want to give us money, can you, the secretary general said, can you pray for me? I said, okay. So he knelt down. I laid my hands on him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I didn't say more than that. And in all my life as a pastor, I saw a strange sight. This man coiled up completely in a circle and rolled like a ball throughout the council room. Scattered the whole place. So I spoke to the spectacular moment to stop. It coiled up like a circle. Scattered the whole place. I spoke to it to stop. And it stopped. I said, what happened to you? I don't know, sir. I just was not myself again. So since the whole of the room was in this array, I didn't want to continue that kind of prayer. I said, okay, you can go. Ah, the president said, sir, if you pray for my sister, and this is happening in my presence, I think you should pray for me too, sir. It was another holy mistake. So I prayed again. All of a sudden, this fellow started a war against his trousers. He was struggling to pull it off. When his trousers did not pull on time, he tore it. He tore his pants. Then I saw the second strange sight. Instead of a normal male organ, what he had was a serpent. I mean the male organ had eyes and a tiny tongue. I was sticking out the tongue like that. So he saw it. And he began to scream. Hey, hey, hey. Look, 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 look. Do something, do something, sir. So I just took the anointing oil, poured it on this strange organ. And it became normal. And I asked him a question. So you are the president of this cult society? So yes. So how many girls in the campus have you slept with this year? Ah, so this year, sir. Let's not talk about this year. Let's talk about this month. And he said, well, 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 well. So, sir, 22. Now, imagine. A parent sent a girl to school. Go and educate yourself and make your life better. Now she went to the campus to be sleeping with a man who has a serpent. You can see that it's like she wants to wage war against herself. There are plenty of people like this, beloved, who are the ones setting the battles array against themselves. You may be fighting a very foolish battle now. You may be fighting yourself and winning the race nobody asks you to run. Try and understand. As far as you are the one fighting yourself, you will be in trouble. You must get to a stage in your life where you must stand up to yourself and acknowledge the truth about yourself. The first step in the school of spiritual maturity is to acknowledge the truth about yourself. As far as you don't want to face the truth about yourself, you give your enemy a hiding place. You become a student in a dangerous school called the school of self-deception. Who are those who oppose themselves? Let's look at them one by one very quickly. Number one, if you fail to carry out self-analysis, you are opposing yourself. When you refuse to come to terms with yourself, you are fighting against yourself. You need to turn the such light of the Holy Ghost on your life as we are starting this year. The Bible says, examine yourself. Examine yourself. If you examine yourself, you will not be judged. Point the accusing fingers at the wrong, at the right person. You are the one that is wrong. Come to terms with yourself. Don't be like the man who was taken to court for stealing a goat. And you say, my Lord, I did not steal any goat. I was passing and I saw a rope and I just took the rope. Only for me to discover when I got home that there was a goat at the end of the rope. So, so I did not see any goat, I just threw the rope. And he said, that's okay. So that's okay. So what's going to happen is this. Yourself, the rope, and the goat will be changed. You need to turn that such light upon yourself. It is time you stop masquerading for yourself. Ask yourself, 
This is a new year. Am I not proud? Do I not exaggerate? Do I not tell lies? Am I not impatient? Do I really fast and pray? Do I not like Jesus for bread and butter only? Am I serious with God when I have money? You should ask yourself these questions. Am I not lazy in prayers? Do I not keep malice? Do I have the agape kind of love? Do I like being told the truth about myself? Until you wake up like that man woke up one morning. I say, yes, I have discovered my enemy. I have discovered my enemy. Everybody in the family, come out. I just discovered my enemy. And the whole family came out. I said, daddy, why is the enemy? Why is the enemy? Let us break the head of the enemy with fire prayers. The man said, I find the enemy. And the enemy is me. He made a discovery. Do I enjoy being criticized? Do I really have faith? Am I fully obedient to God? Am I the kind of person I love to be noticed? If, I, if I'm not noticed, I get upset. Do I really have the genuine baptism of the Holy Spirit? I'm just copying the speaking in tongues of some other people. Do I tell lies against God? I say God has said when God did not say anything. Do I think and meditate on immorality? Do I watch pornography? Do I practice masturbation? Do I steal? Do I commit secret sins? Face the truth, beloved. Confront yourself with the truth. If you don't do this, you are opposing yourself, you are fighting yourself. If the enemy is using impatience, anger, or pride to get into your life, and you continue to bind the enemy, you are binding yourself. You are binding yourself because you are the one opening the door. It's like you open the window of your room at night, and you stood by the window, binding the wind from coming in. This would be a useless and foolish battle. If the Bible said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm, and the anointed is being touched and the prophet is being harmed, then the anointed should carry out a self-analysis. The enemy will use your unconfessed sin, your weak points or neglected points against you. Somebody came to the mountain of fire in the year 2000. And she said she enjoyed the service, everything. She enjoyed the praise worship. She enjoyed the singing, which they used to sing in our church. She enjoyed the testimonies. She enjoyed everything. But the man that now spoiled the whole show is a Jew. By saying that the Bible says, a man shall not put on that which belongs to a woman. A woman shall not put on that which belongs to a man. That woman should not be wearing trousers. They wear it. Spirit husband will trouble their life. And she said, lie, lie, I'm not coming there again. That was seven years ago. Last week, she looked for my phone number. She's calling me now from UCH. And now, she's at the point of death for cancer. It would have been easier for her to put a scissors and cut the trouser and convert it to a sketch seven years ago. Than now, that the situation now is here and there. You need to face yourself. These things that I'm doing, if the way I am dressing, if the way I'm, I'm carrying myself, if everybody was blind, would I carry myself like that? If the answer is no, then it means most of us are trying to please others. And it is not good. Neither is it correct for somebody in the light to try to please somebody in darkness. They may call you names now and say you are looking one kind. But when Goliath appears on the skin scene, they come back to you. Face yourself. Be honest, be brutal with yourself this year. Don't hide your weaknesses, don't hide yourselves. Deal with them. If not, you'll be fighting yourself. I tell you about that man of God who was so angry with the way his life was going, he started a three days drive fast. Father, I need a change. You must destroy all my enemies. He took some 35 and began to read it against what he called his enemies. He prayed from the heart. Day one, no voice, no revelation, no answer. Day two, no voice, no revelation, no answer. Day three, as he continued to pray, all of a sudden as he looked up, he saw a hot sweep coming from heaven. He was happy. He said, thank you, Lord. You have brought a weapon to fight my enemies. All of a sudden, on his head. 
Say, ah, see, see, see. The Lord, you are beating me, you are beating me. Then the voice said, You are your own enemy. That's why I've not answered you, sister. You are saying, as you arise, and all enemies you scatter, but you are your own enemy. You are the one opposing yourself. When Jesus said to Peter, I will make you fishers of men. If Peter said, no, I don't want to be fishers of men. I want to continue with my fish. He is the one opposing himself. Peter will continue to fish and will become a pauper in the fishing business and will die a poor, unnoticed fisherman. Group number two of those who oppose themselves. Those who are living unfruitful Christian lives. God did not create hell fire for Christians. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. But beloved, there is one thing that can get a believer into hell fire. That thing is called unfruitfulness. And God takes this issue seriously. How can God invest so much on a person and not expect fruit? What type of fruit is your life bearing unto God? That gardener was planting and there was no fruit in the tree. And the boys cried, cut it down. So if you are not you are a fruitless Christian, you are not doing anything for the master, you are fighting yourself. Group, you don't have. As fellowship, you don't go. For the share the grace, you are off. You treat yourself as a stranger or a visitor in your father's house. And many keep saying, well... And I keep hearing the announcement, but I will participate after the Lord has solved my problem. What a pity. You want to blackmail God. It's not possible at all. Number three, those who oppose themselves. Those who engage in family strife. If you hate your wife, you hate yourself. If you hate your husband, you hate yourself. The Bible says family strife in those prayers. I said, a lot of attacks against marriages now, and many marriages are just marriages of convenience. It's become such a horrible situation that husband and wife comes to church, and they don't talk to each other in the church, they don't talk to each other even after they've left church. You're opposing yourself. Four. If you have any demonic material in your possession, you are opposing yourself. Deuteronomy 7.26 tells us, Deuteronomy 7, 26 tells us. That's Deuteronomy 7, 26. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thine house. Lest thou be a cursed thing like it. For thou shalt utterly detest it. And thou shalt utterly avoid it. For it is a cursed thing. When you bring abomination into your house, you are given an open invitation to demonic invasion. You cannot attack demonic walls successfully when their property is in your body or in your house. All the armlets, the waistband, the crucifixes will only strengthen the battle against you. So any strengthening in the house should be thrown out. And you have to be careful any decoration that you bring in. Look at it well from the inside high. I know a man of God. He just noticed that his finances went down. He used to be very rich. He started losing his money. So he started praying. One day the Lord said, My son, there is something you inherited from your great grandfather in this house. He said, My son, what is it? He said, Lord, it's a picture. He said, Now go and look at the picture. So he went there. So look at it well. He looked. The Lord said, What is this? He said, It's a dragon. He said, now you are a preacher. What does dragon represent in the Bible? He said, Lord, it represents the devil. That's what is troubling your house. He took the picture down, destroyed it, and began to prosper. You have to be very careful what you bring into your house. Group number five, those who oppose themselves. Those who engage in sexual immorality. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, 1 Corinthians 6, 18, 1 Corinthians 6, 18 says, Flee fornication. Everything that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. What? Knowing not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, 
For ye are bought with a price, and therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You may think you are enjoying yourself, but you are actually waging a serious war against your life. A war that may not end in your generation, that may continue generations after you. Group number six, those who disobey their parents. The Bible says those kinds of children are inviting short life and they are fighting themselves. As far as what your parents are telling you and what is right in scripture, you must obey. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Ephesians 6 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. You are disobeying your parents, and you are writing a letter to a short life. Group number seven, that those who seek worldly pleasures, First Timothy 5, 6 tells us that if you seek pleasure, you are dead while you are living. Such people are killing themselves. They are fighting themselves. I ask you a question this morning. Why should you be strengthening your enemy? Why should you be fighting yourself? Why are you battling yourself? If you are bad fighting yourself, you better repent and cry unto the Lord. Because it will not help at all this year. Group number eight are those waging war against the Holy Spirit. Waging war against the Holy Spirit. And this is a very sad war to fight. When you are fighting the Holy Ghost, you are fighting yourself. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Genesis 6, 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Make up your mind this year. You will not be part of those resisting and fighting the Holy Ghost. And this is why, beginning from tomorrow now, we are starting our Bible study on the Holy Spirit. And those who want maximum growth this year, they should not miss those Bible studies because it's on the Holy Spirit. The day the Holy Spirit gives up on you, you are finished. Are you fighting the Holy Spirit? You will not win the battle against it. It is a very terrible thing to wage war against the Spirit of the Lord. Good night. Those who battle against the word of God. When the word of God said, Just fear the Lord. The word of God is not tolerant to anybody. The Bible is not a tolerant book. Uh, people accuse many preachers, many people who talk about holiness that they are intolerant. No, the Bible is not a tolerant book. The Bible does not tolerate iniquity. It doesn't tolerate nonsense for anybody. Whether you are white or black or blue, whatever your color, the Bible does not tolerate your iniquity. It says, Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. It didn't say as it is done in America. It didn't say as it is done in TBN television. It didn't say as it is done on mag- in magazines. No. As it is done in heaven. Heaven is the standard, not anybody on earth. The words of God will not adjust to your life. No, it is you who will adjust to it. If you run ahead of the word of God, it's you that you reverse. If you are trailing behind it, you must run and catch it up. Are you here this morning, beloved? And right now, you are fighting against a clear stand of the word of God. It's like you are fighting the weather. Anybody who fights the weather, the weather will kill you. If you say you are angry with the rain, and because of that you want to stay inside, it will kill you. When you go against the clear teaching of the word of God, it is spiritual suicide. Because to go against the clear teaching of the word of God is to face the fiery squad of the angels and to finish the person off. The Bible says he exhausts his word against his name, above his name. Once the Bible said, thou shalt not. It means thou shalt not. Instead of some people to sit down now and take their Bibles and study it, memorize it, eat it, make it part and parcel of their lives, confess it, become man and woman of the world. No. They run to one prophet there. Baba, what did you see? They run to another prophet. Baba, what did you see? They run to another prophet. Baba, what did you see? They run to that mountain. They run to this mountain. They run to this mountain. 
God who abandons you and does not talk to you in the valley, you say he's going to talk to you on the mountain. A lot of maximum foolishness. Anybody biting the fingers that fed him is fighting against himself. If you are biting the fingers that fed you, you are fighting against yourself. It is madness to throw stones into the well from which you drank water when you were thirsty. When I was a lecturer in the university, I used to harass students who, when you tell them, hello, which school did you attend? They are ashamed to tell you. They will keep quiet. I said, no, you must tell me the name. I used to harass them. This is wrong because that school, no matter how low rated it is, did something in your life. Whether it is Kokoron Co Grammar School or Fentile Primary School, it did something in your life. So to run the place down is opposing yourself really. When you run the place down, you're opposing yourself. Has someone ever done good to you in your life? Do not antagonize that person. Because the Bible has very harsh words. In Proverbs seventeen thirteen. Proverbs seventeen thirteen. Proverbs 17, 13 says, Who so rewarded evil for good? Evil shall not depart from his house. So don't speak evil of anyone who has blessed you or assisted you. Do not speak evil of them. If such a person has annoyed you, it's best to keep quiet and over your battles to the Lord. Never repay evil for evil. By the same token, Never speak against any anointed person of God. So his own God is responsible. God shall deal with it himself. And no member of MFM should criticize or run down any man of God. You may find that you are pitching yourself in warfare against the Almighty. Moses told the children of Israel, don't marry foreign wives. But the same Moses went and married a foreign wife. So Aaron and Miriam, they grouped together against Moses and said, no, this thing you did is wrong. But when the battle got to the presence of the Lord, the Lord was with Moses. The Lord was against those who were pointing to Moses. I want you to understand this very well. Group number 11. When you go into spiritual warfare with an unclean heart, you are waging war against yourself and you are harming yourself. Wage war against yourself, you harm yourself. Going into spiritual warfare with unclean heart. It was London many years ago. I was at a place. One bishop came to me and said, Okay, look here. I, I said, Woman is possessed. Let's go and pray for her. And I said, Okay. I followed the bishop. The bishop had his flat hat on his head. I was wearing the bishop uniform. So uh, we went there. And I was this beautiful woman sitting on the floor, was just gazing at the ceiling, and the eyes were not winking. So the bishop moved in, and he spoke. Hear the word of the Lord. You foul spirit. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I command you to depart from my life now in the mighty name of Jesus. All of a sudden, the eyes that were not winking before started winking. And something spoke from the mouth of the woman. Bishop, I command you to shut up in the name of Jesus. And the man was taken aback. Well, he gathered himself again. I said, you fast spirit. I silence him now. The spirit spoke again. I said, Bishop, don't let me disgrace you before your friend there. If you don't go away, I will tell your friend your secret. When the bishop heard that one, the very wise man, he moved back. I said, Dr. Luka, over to you. And I was very rascally in those days. When I got there, the first question I asked the demon. Say, you, what has Bishop done? Yes. May 5th, he slept with one of our members. I said, Bishop, is that true? He said, yes, continue. Here was a man going into warfare with an unclean heart. You harm yourself. Plenty of people are coming for deliverance now, we thank God. You came for deliverance. Your sinner, unbeliever boyfriend is the one that came to drop you into deliverance ground and is coming to pick you back again. 
You have abandoned your matrimonial home. You are living with another woman. You are going for deliverance. You are wasting your time. You stole money from your bank. And now you are in trouble. You have not returned the money. You have not made a decision. Now you are running for deliverance. You are wasting time. You have done terrible things. Which you need to go and apologize. No apology. You are running for deliverance. You are wasting your time. Your instrument of iniquity is still at home. You have your condoms. You have your contraceptives. All still at home. You have not destroyed them. You are running for deliverance. You are wasting your time. Going into warfare with an unclean heart is opposing yourself. Many are just operating zeal without knowledge. And you will kill yourself if you just operate zeal without knowledge. Finally, when you want to take over, when you should take cover, you oppose yourself. People, when they sometimes say, well, I want this, I want that, but what they ought to have done, they have not done it yet. They want to take over. When they should take cover. Moses tried to take over. When they should take cover. And he got into trouble. This morning, I'm here to appeal to you and to caution the careless. This is a different year. A year of new beginnings. A year of untold blessings for those who are righteous and terrible disappointment for those who are not straightforward. Close your eyes and your sit now. We are starting another year. If you have issues to sort out with the Lord, examine yourself now. Examine yourself now. You have been fighting for God without God. You have been fighting the foolish battle. You have been waging war against your life. You have not been honest with yourself. You hate somebody, you are laughing at the person. You are rejoicing in iniquity. You are deep, deep into sin. You are fighting your family, you are fighting your wife, you have left your matrimonial home. Where do you go from there? This year of no beginning. Talk to the Lord yourself. Say, Father, examine my heart. Push out anything in it that is opposing my life. Begin to talk to the Lord on your seat now. It is important for you to be positioned for breakthrough this year. And it's important for you to cry to the Lord. The Lord is already treating some people like Jonah. Because the Lord has been speaking to them, speaking to them, speaking to them, but just, they just refuse to listen. Amen. Say, my father, let me stop opposing myself. In the name of Jesus, talk to the father now. Tell the Lord you don't want to belong to the group of those who oppose themselves. Amen. Man. We have seven prayers to pray for ourselves on this matter. The seven prayers I wanted to pray now, they are prayers of serious commitment. Say, my father, I will not oppose myself. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and cry to the Lord. I shall not oppose myself. In Jesus' name we pray. Wherever the enemy has knocked me down. Can you say this loud and clear? Oh God, our Lord, and lift me up in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has knocked me down, oh God, our Lord, and lift me up. In Jesus' name we pray. Prodigal anointing. Can you say this loud and clear? I stand against my life. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to be a prodigal child. In Jesus' name we pray. And it 
got implanted in my life to disgrace me this year. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, if it's planted to disgrace me this year, deal with that power now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray. Stronghold of iniquity. Clear the way in the name of Jesus. Clear away the stronghold of iniquity. Jesus then we pray every power assigned to waste my salvation can you shout out loud and clear there in the name of Jesus Jesus, then we pray. Don't joke with this last prayer. The Bible says, the rich man lifted up his head in the hellfire and he saw Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham. He said, Father Abraham. So he knew Abraham. Tell Lazarus to come and put water on my tongue. Abraham said, No. When you were alive, you had the opportunity. You wasted it. So that's all. No second chance. Can you cry to the heavenly and shout like this? Opportunity wasted! I am not your candidate! In the name of Jesus! In Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. I decree that as you go into this year, the protection power of the Almighty shall be upon you. You will go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. The eyes that neither slumbers nor sleep shall be your rock and your shield. Wherever you go, the angels of God shall be your dispatch riders at the front and at the back. In the name of Jesus, you shall be blessed. Your blessing shall be uncommon. Your thinking shall be uncommon. Your anointing shall be an overcoming anointing. The Lord shall exalt you above your colleagues. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us share the grace and fellowship.